Well, welcome everyone to Race Face TV and this edition of Race Face Spotlight. Today, we're going to go up to Manassas, Virginia, where we find 14 year old Cars Tour late model racer Minnie Tyrell. Minnie, how are you doing this afternoon? I'm doing fantastic. How about yourself? I'm good, man. I'm good. I'm talking to you. What could be better? <laughs> oh, thank you. So, I mean, let's kind of get right into this. You've, uh, you're racing full time in the Cars Tour. Um, series this year and i mean that's that's really the best of the best late model drivers that are out there on the east coast you got two races in the book so far for 2019 so how would you kind of grade your season so far uh, i think we've been doing pretty well you know for uh for never coming to that series and obviously racing with the best of the best drivers uh on the east coast in late model stock cars um you know i i can't say i'm disappointed in our team the effort that everybody's put in is truly incredible but you know i think I, I still have a lot to learn i still have a lot to improve on but i think we've been doing okay this, this the past three races you know it's kind of uh it, it's kind of the, i guess i would say to let everybody know how competitive that series is we watch especially like in qualifying and we see the difference between the first place qualifier and the 15th place qualifier and most of the time it's like two tenths that's it yeah. All and the time, uh, you know, it, it's amazing how that one thousandth of a second can move you up two spots, and it's just like, and that's what you're there competing for is is that one thousandth of a second. Can you get it? Can what can you do to the race car that will make it just that much better? Um, and it, it's it's in every single person that you get there, and you re, and I realize like especially this weekend, one through twenty eight is all in it to win it. Oh. Any one of those race cars, any one of those drivers can win the race. And it's just a matter of fact of who conserves their race car and who's there. It's it's just, it's so competitive. Yeah, well, I mean, what did you expect? $30,000 to win. I think that was paying like 1200 bucks to start. So all the big dogs came out and it was a stacked, a stacked field. So one thing I wanted to do is I wanted to congratulate you on being chosen as a Touring 12 driver. I mean, that's quite an honor. And for a lot of the viewers that doesn't really know what that means, can you give us a short little description of what being a Touring 12 driver is all about? So Touring 12 drivers, uh, awesome. Thank you for uh, selecting me for the Cars Tour. It's amazing. But uh, the Touring 12 is uh, we've committed, uh, me and 12 or 11 other drivers, uh, not including myself, have uh, elected to uh, run all points races, which are 12 races in the Cars Tour and represent them on and off the racetrack uh, throughout the uh, throughout the season. Yeah, and I and there's some added little bonuses in there for you guys for making that commitment that we won't kind of get into a lot of that details. But uh, I know one of the cool things is, is that when you get there, you guys get a park first. You get the best, you get the we best do. parking yeah. spots inside. Right, right. Yeah, absolutely. So that keeps you from having to go, well, I know the gates don't open till nine, but maybe we want to get in line at like 4 a.m. It's like, no. <laughs> stop the touring 12s coming in first that's a pretty cool deal so let's talk about last weekend a little bit because you had an eighth place run there i mean i think total if i if i if i remember correctly there were like 32 cars maybe maybe even a, a few more than that that were actually there that race was at orange county um, it was the largest late model purse i think in history for that race Thirty thousand to win 1200 bucks to start i don't know what what it paid out on the different levels that but i mean you've got to be really excited about your performance coming home uh with a top 10 finish in eighth with the who's who of racing and really only your second you know cars to a race of the year i mean that that has to be very gratifying not only for you but also for brian and dan and your mom and your dad and everybody that's actually a part of your team no, absolutely. It's uh, it was truly an accomplishment to be able to go and and run in the top ten with those guys. That was my best car store finish uh, so far this year, and my best car store finish ever. So that was cool, also to to see that. Um, and no, it, it's it's really incredible coming from twenty eighth um all the way to eighth and gaining twenty spots. Who would knew? Uh, I thought you know I was just gonna. Kind of hang out in the back to mid pack of the field. I know we did have a little bit to race with, um, not a ton. Um, just trying to gain experience and obviously finish all 200 laps. Um, 
you know, try to stay on that lead lap. But, uh, you know, I, there was a couple of times where the leaders were coming around and uh, I was still just riding and um, there were a few accidents and uh, just forced to be able to skip by those um, and only gained probably, I think, five, six spots off of the accidents. And then, uh, I mean, I think about halfway through the race, the car really started to come in, made some adjustments down on pit row. Guys were super quick and made it safe. Uh, got right back out there and we uh, we just kind of took off. It was, it was pretty cool. And then we put on our tires and got even better. Yeah, I think anybody that, you know, you're going to go into a 200 lap race, which I don't know, is that the is that the longest race that you've ever run is 200 laps? Yes, sir. That was, uh, I've competed in a 200 lap race at Southern National for the Classic, um, but unfortunately ended our night at uh, lap 163 with a broken axle. So, you know, one of the things is, is that, you know, you would think, well, when I get out of the car after 200 laps, man, I'm just going to be exhausted. But I guarantee <laughs> you one thing, when you finish in the top 10, that exhaustion level is nowhere near if you would have finished 20th. <laughs> no, if I would have finished 20th, I'd have got out and... I mean, not, not, you know, pissed or, well, hold on, start over. I don't want to phrase it like that. Um, okay. That's okay. So. You, can, you, can, you can say that. That's good. But it, but it is. It's, it's, it's that mental state. It's that little pump of adrenaline that when you get out and you stop and, you know, you get the window that down and the steering wheel off and you go, wow, I did it. I just finished yeah, no, the it, top 10 with the best late model drivers in the country. Yeah, it was... It was pretty incredible, you know, I, 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 we came off the radio and the first thing I do, uh, coming down the back straight away, I came over the radio, said, I love you guys so much. Uh, thank you for, uh, for getting me here. So I think that was, uh, probably the coolest time, but you know, after 200 laps, uh, I really, I, I think is the more I work at it, the more I exercise, the more I really focus on my career is the better I get at it. And the more I run these endurance races, um, the better I get at it and the better my body condition gets at it. So, I mean, I came out of the 200 laps and I, I felt fine about the only thing that was tired was maybe maybe my uh, my feet a little bit. They were a little toasty in there. But other than that, I was, I was ready to go. I could run another 200 lap race. All right. So, you know, you were talking about your career a little bit there. So let's go back and, and just think, you know, knowing that you're in development time of your career, where that's the most important thing that you're going out, you're experiencing new tracks, you're experiencing races that you know could be anywhere from 240 lap deals to 100 lap to 200 laps um is there a particular driver that you watch in that cars tour and actually try to learn something from uh, i think that race i really paid attention to uh to lee pulliam i think he's he's definitely one of my idols that i've looked at and uh deke mccaskill and we were at the ice cream shop uh on the friday night uh, when we were meeting there, that's also what the 2012 does, kind of sets up little meetings here and there off the racetrack. And I was there with Deke, and, uh, you know, I, I told him the story. I said, hey, when I was probably six years old, I was playing Matchbox cars and Old Dominion Speedway, which is literally a mile down the, from my house. Uh, I, yeah, I get all the hero cards and the driver's cards, and I had one of Deke's car, or, or I had it from some racetrack. I don't even know, but... Um, so I remember looking at that, and I, I always remembered the blue and pink car as my favorite, and it was Deke's car. So I think it's pretty cool that I get to race against him to this day, um, obviously being one of my favorite late model drivers growing up. Uh, so I, I definitely, Deke's a great guy. I had a long conversation with him. Uh, um, he's an awesome dude, and same with Lee Pulliam. Yeah, I mean, that, that, that's got to be really exciting to to get the opportunity. And that's why I love the Cars Tour so much. It's the, it's like, this is the up and coming young racers, but then there's these older, and I'm, I'm not calling them old, but older yeah. professionals mm -hmm. in there. I mean, you, you had Timothy Peters in that race. Josh Berry was in it. McCaskills were in it. Um, I mean, it, it was Bobby McCarty. I mean, it, it was, it was, it was stacked. Absolutely. No, Timothy Peters is also another one that I look up to. Who I've uh, who I've always kind of looked at ever since you know watching him on the TV with the trucks and uh, seeing him go fast, um, which is incredible. And getting to race with him, I know he put on some tires and him and Bobby McCarty, and they just rode a little bit. And I was there racing with them, riding. So I door to door with Timothy Peters, Bobby McCarty. I don't think it, it gets better than that. Yeah, and Timothy's such a class guy. I mean, I. I... I would say that a lot of the race car drivers that I've met through through my career, um, he is a class act. He's always kind of 
very level-headed, very respectful, just an all-around good guy. So let's kind of talk about maybe a couple things that people do not know about Mini Tyrell. And I think if somebody saw you in your race suit getting out of the race car, the last thing they would think is, oh, did you guys know he's a hockey player? <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. No, hockey is a, uh, the other side of my life. Uh, I love hockey. I've been playing it since I was seven years old. Um, I have nets outside. I go outside. I play street hockey all the time. Um, no, hockey hockey's a huge part of my life, and I love playing the sport. Um, and it also gives me something to do over the winter and stay active. Yeah, so I don't know, maybe maybe Brandon could bring the car down, you know, and then you guys could, you know, put the net up and go, okay, now we're, we're shooting hockey pucks into the net to win prizes or something. That'd be a pretty cool at-track uh, thing. It wouldn't be if I was actually swinging the hockey stick because after about four swings, Brandon would be like, okay, we got enough dents in the car. He didn't even come anywhere near the window net. So, okay, I'm going to put you on the spot now. What's Minnie's prediction? for the Stanley Cup? Oh, Lord. Uh, Tampa Bay, man. I think they're going to do it this year. As much as I want to root for Washington, uh, Tampa Bay is, they are looking so strong. I mean, they, I think the three or four times they played us, they won every single one except for one of them. And uh, they are, they are the hot, the hot stuff this year. Um, and I don't think there's anybody who's going to stop them. But, I, you know, of course, I like to see Washington go back to back and win another Stanley Cup. But, hey, you know, I think they're the team to beat this year. And not telling you who my favorite team is, but I do live right outside of Tampa. Uh, <laughs> they, were, they were pretty awesome this year. I mean, I think they only lost 14 games all year. It was, it was mm, crazy. That's, I know they, that's set, a, I know they set a record. You know, they set a record for the most points scored, I think, since 1995 by a hockey team. So, mm -hmm. But you never know. That's the one thing about, you know, the Stanley Cup is that, you know, you can kind of play mediocre all year and you can kind of get into, you know, get your game face on, if you would, when it comes down time to the cup time. And you can win that. That's got to be the toughest trophy in all of professional sports to win, um, I think, is that Stanley Cup. So oh, you know, you've, got a, you've got a lot of things going on in your life. So how do you mm -hmm. balance? I mean, you got school, you're playing hockey, you're dealing with sports, you're racing, you do a tremendous amount of charity work. How tough is that to be able to balance all of that? You know, it's, uh, it's, it, people, it kind of looks at it like it's really hard. Um, I really don't think it's that hard. You know, it's, uh, I, I have time to race. I have time to play hockey. Um, I kind of just work it out. Obviously racing being my number one priority in my, my focus and my goal in life is to become a race car driver. Um, you know, I, I'll obviously balancing my charity work. I try to do it here and there. And uh, my mom helps me out a ton with that. And my mother and father do a great job of, of helping me keep organized with this stuff and uh, set some of these events up. Um, so, yeah, no, I think I just balance it by just, you know, going with the flow of things, um, making sure everything fits in place and kind of just planning my weeks and, planning my studies for, for after school. I know probably one of the, the, the most exciting days in your mom's future will be the day that you get your driver's license. You become <laughs> 16. So she doesn't go, well, I got to take him to the gym. I got to get, get him to school. I got to get him to the shop. I got to get to this charity event. And, and, and it just, it, it's so cool because, you know, they, they asked Sam Mayer that same question. He went at Bristol this weekend. And they said, Sam, you don't even have your driver's license. And he goes, well, I do have my learner's permit if that counts. But that just kind of blows me away. The, the amount of talent that you guys have at such a young age that you're able to go out here and race against some of the best race car drivers in the world. And you guys still don't even have your driver's license yet. That's nuts. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, uh, I think that's, that's going to be one of the happiest days of my parents' life is the driver's <laughs> license because... All dad has been telling me is when you get your driver's license, you're driving everywhere. I'm sitting in the back just like you do. I'm sleeping the whole ride down, you know, blah, blah, blah. But I guess I, I got to I gotta return the favor. So uh. Yeah, yeah you, got, you got a lot of years to return that favor to them. Yeah. So, um, you know, I can see you got FOJ on your, on your, on your jacket yes, there. Sir. FOJ's on mm -hmm. your car. Um, they're a new sponsor for you this year. And, and you've been helping out Friends of Jacqueline for more than just this year. Um, just real short, tell, 
Tell the viewing audience why FOJ is so dear to your heart. FOJ is basically they take a child and they want to not necessarily focus on research, but improving the quality of life for that child. What they do is they take and they build a lifetime relationship to whatever their favorite sport is. They take them to sports teams. Obviously, our, us in the racing community has really gotten involved with FOJ. So we're trying to bring as much children as we can to the racing community. Um, and we build lifetime relationships, whether it's on the phone or sending text messages or at the racetrack with us. Um, the FOJ is truly an incredible organization and uh, we'll, I would want to work with them for the rest of my life. Yeah, it, it, it's so special. The more and more that I learn about it, the more that I, I just get so impressed with that. So if you're watching today and you'd like to be able to support many and the Friends of Jacqueline Foundation and these kids that are battling pediatric uh, brain cancers and other type of childhood cancers, you can go to Minnie's website at minnytyrell.com, click on Racing for a Cause, and you can donate right there. So I just encourage you uh, to actually do that. So Minnie, up next for the Cars Tour is a Speedway. Have you ever been there before? I have not been there. Uh, I've been trying to get on the simulator and learn the racetrack. I, uh, I pulled out the, uh, the simulator and got on it as soon as I got back from, uh, from uh, Orange County. Uh, I think I was just, I'm really looking forward to the next race. Um, obviously, I've got a lot of confidence coming out from uh, our great finish in the eighth uh, in the top 10 with, at Orange County. So um, I think uh, I'm excited for it. I've never been there. It looks like a very cool track. Um, feels pretty cool. So uh, we'll see how it goes. All right. So you've got uh, you got 10 more races on the Cars Tour alone. So after a Speedway, what upcoming race are you most looking forward to and, and, and actually being able to go to that track and be able to compete there? Well, I know we've already been there, but it's Hickory Motor Speedway. And I'll say we've already been there again, but South Boston was one of my favorite racetracks to race at, not only just because I was doing very well there, but there's multiple grooves. You can run the top, just like at Orange County. You can run the bottom, you can run right on the line. You can touch down on the apron. Um, truly an incredible racetrack. I think it's going to be very fun. Um, and obviously the throwback race at Hickory, uh, where you deck the cars out and old memorabilia and uh, put them on the racetrack. It'll be very cool. So do we do we get a sneak peek today, or are you kind of holding it under your hat on what your throwback paint scheme is going to be? I'm not sure. I think we'll hold it under our hat, but um, we'll probably reveal it probably within a month or so of the race and uh, pull her out, pull the car cover off, and uh, check her out. All right. That's awful cool. So, uh, well, Minnie, I, I really appreciate you being with us tonight. Uh, good Good luck at your next race there at Ace Speedway. Um, and I know that all of you racers have people that you have surrounded yourself with that makes all of this possible. I know that topping that list, and I'm just going to throw it out there, um, is, is definitely your mom and dad. I, I've never you know, been around parents that are so committed as they are and so involved in what you do and the hard work that they put in it. But is there anybody else that you'd like to give a shout out to? Uh, my old crew, uh, Brandon Butler, Dan Givens. Um, I have regular people, uh, Larry, who is on our pit crew, who comes out and supports us. He's been my grandparents' neighbor for 15 years in the past. Um, but, you know, everybody who comes to support me um, really does mean a lot to me. Um, I, I definitely don't say it enough, but, you know, people spend days out of their out of their week just to come and and watch me race and uh, cheer me on, which is truly incredible. So I appreciate it to uh, all the fans who come out, watch the races, all the fans who come down and meet me and uh, grab a picture with me. I love it. And uh, thank you guys so much for uh, for making me, uh, to, for getting me to the racetrack and also making me go fast. <laughs> yeah, there you go. So for all of you that don't know, if you want to follow these young racers on the Cars Tour, you can actually go to carstour.tv. It's actually very affordable to be able to uh, buy that pass so that you could watch all these races. Uh, I, I know as I was sharing with you before we came on the air, it, it was kind of weird for me because, you know, there are two of you in that race and I'm watching it on carstour.tv and, and then I have my race monitor on. Well, there was two and a half laps difference between the two of them. So I'm just glad that the, that the race monitor was in head of the TV 
because when <laughs> it's the other way around, yeah. if you guys are racing someplace and I'm not able to be able to visually see that, and I'm trying to, to follow it on race monitor, I mean, you talk about stressful, but that is, I, I have enough stress in my life, but that really ramps up my, my stress level. So many, um, how do people follow you on social media? Uh, you can find me on social media, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Mini Tyrell. All right, there you go. Mini Tyrell, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Mini, thank you so much for being with us. Again, good luck for the rest of the year. And we're going to be coming back to you uh, probably in the next three months and kind of get another update from you. Awesome. Thank you very much. Okay, well, thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Um, this was a great episode of Race Face Spotlight. You can always catch up on any episode that you might have missed by going to raceface.tv, click on On Demand, and catch up with any of the Race Face drivers that you might have missed. And as always, I encourage you, strongly encourage you, to go out to local racing tracks in your community. You'll have a blast. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see all of you back here next week.